We get an update on the US consumer this week with retail sales and the uh, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. Now, when these came out last month, that was a real shocking reminder to people that the Delta variant was having an impact on US consumer activity. Even with the vaccination rate, even with the reopening, etc., uh, consumers were concerned, as we have seen in many economies across the world, and entirely justifiably with a, a new variant turning up that uh, needs to be monitored how that works and how the vaccinations work um, in response to that. So this uh, these numbers this week, there'll be uh, an update, retail sales for August, but a flash reading on consumer sentiment for September. And we believe it will confirm that we have seen the high point for the US consumer and that fear is casting a very long shadow. ECB speeches this week, the ones to watch are from President Lagarde and also Chief Economist Philip Lane. They can set out in more detail now the reasoning behind their decision last week, which Lagarde was keen to tell you it was not a taper, even though they will be conducting fewer purchases. It was a recalibration, so expect to hear more of that word, recalibration. Of course, she's frightened the concept taper might look a little bit hawkish. Uh, and then Philip Lane, one of the more dovish members of the ECB, he is going to be talking about the uh, strategy review which led to a change to the ECB's target. It is now symmetric around 2% rather than being below but close to 2%, which they failed abysmally to achieve anyway, but at least now they're trying to signal that they will look to run the economy hot. This is Philip Lane's chance to really explain to you what that means, how committed they are, even if you do still hear protestations from the hawks. Because, of course, although the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Programme, the PEP, uh, will be drawing to a close in Q1 next year, the question really is what's going to happen to the old Asset Purchase Programme, the APP. That's what Philip Lane will be much more focused on. Inflation data this week, it's everywhere. We have it from the US, Canada, the UK and the Eurozone. But of course, all the focus will be on that US number. And that's because of the predicament in which the Federal Reserve finds itself, whereby, yes, there is inflation, but employment is starting to fall short of what they might have hoped. Um, now, for those of you who have been following us for some time, you'll know that we see inflation as a fairly useless indicator right now. It's not telling us anything about the economic cycle. It's a bit like being in an aeroplane. You're looking at all of the dashboard of indicators. And although, you know, one of the engines is on fire, you're looking at a, a, a dial over here that's got nothing to do with that. Um, it's, of course, relevant in the sense that uh, we do clearly have inflationary pressures in the economy, but it's going to be very, very volatile. We are still readjusting. We are finding the new equilibrium between supply and demand. Used cars massively in demand at the same time as semiconductor chip shortages are restricting supply. That is starting to ease. But something else will pop up, something else we feel we really all need in the next phase of life living with this pandemic. So, you can monitor inflation and it may well continue to cause a headache for central banks as we see it as more of a stagflationary force than a reflationary force, given growth will be suboptimal. But really, this is not the inflation that you're looking for.